Well, yeah, today it's very complex, but there's been a lot of time for things to evolve. When life was just getting started, there weren't cells. There were proto-cells. They were way simpler. Okay, could life have been simpler? Scientists try to gauge what the simplest possible life form could have been by taking a very simple cell and removing as many things as possible without killing it. These papers took a very simple bacterial cell that had about 985 genes and cut it down to 474 genes. But the bug was barely hanging on, so they added a few genes back in to get a cell that was more reasonably alive. They found 493 genes were essential to keep the minimal cell alive. This work suggests that there is a practical boundary for how simple life can possibly be, not just today, but at any point in time. But in order to cut that many genes from the original 985, they essentially had to coddle the poor, hobbled little bacteria. You see, the original bacteria was able to make its own food from what was around it, like a big boy. But the downsized bacteria needed someone else to make his PB&J for him. And he was picky. He needed it cut into triangles and had a crust cut off. Dad, how many times do I have to tell It required a precise cocktail of nutrients, basically life support, or else it would die. However, most of these life support nutrients couldn't have existed on a prebiotic earth. If you try to simplify a living organism, removing some of its tools for survival, it doesn't just magically no longer need that thing. The only way to keep it alive is to place a heavier burden for survival on the surrounding environment. The organism just becomes more genetically fragile, unable to endure slight environmental changes, or it'll become dependent on other life forms to keep it alive, which, if you're paying attention, is not a possibility for the first living thing. Okay, so this guy is basically saying that since we can only take X number of genes of the simplest cell, there is no way a cell could be any simpler and survive. Well, to give an analogy, if you start taking genes out of the simplest eukaryotic cell, the cell would be inviolable long before you reduce the genome to the size of an average prokaryote. So, let's say we lived in an alternative timeline where prokaryotes went extinct a billion years ago, and someone repeated this experiment with the simplest eukaryote. Would that mean that no life could be simpler? Obviously not, since we know that far simpler organisms, prokaryotes, can be free living. And this brings me to conflation many people have about early life. That between the last common ancestor of all living life forms and the first organism. The two are not the same, and hundreds of millions of years likely separated them. Going back to the alternative timeline analogy, just because we found the minimal limit of any extant cell, this doesn't preclude the possibility of an organism which lived before the last common ancestor surviving with a smaller genome. In fact, this would be expected, as some early organisms evolved progressively more biocatalysts such as enzymes or ribozymes, the rate and efficiency of their metabolic reactions would increase. This would in turn give organisms which had these biocatalysts a selective advantage over those that didn't, causing them to outcompete the earlier life forms. This process would repeat, leading to ever more complex life forms but the cell's metabolic pathways would become increasingly interdependent on each other, meaning the minimum number of genes required to maintain a viable organism will increase. The bacteria is not a simple organism. It's a grizzled heavyweight that survived 4 billion years in an environment of harsh competition. Meanwhile, the organisms with metabolisms, which could be sustained by fewer genes, will die out because they couldn't compete with the more complex organisms. So, this whole argument is based on a selection bias.